Welcome back, beautiful Tri-State area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in our Going Deep segment brought to you by CO2 Lift, we're featuring Dr. Suzanne Kilmer, founding director of Laser and Skin Surgery Medical Group and clinical professor at the Department of Dermatology at the University of California, Davis School of Medicine. Dr. Kilmer was a principal investigator in several hundred clinical trials for laser skin resurfacing, laser hair removal, pulsed dye, and fractional lasers for wrinkles and scars. She lectures annually at national and international dermatology meetings. She served on the board of directors for ASDS and ASLMS and has received multiple awards and presidential citations for her contributions to the field of dermatology. Now, understanding how the treatment work requires knowledge about lasers and their effects on the skin. That is Dr. Kilmer's entire ethos. Simply put, lasers are powerful, narrow spectrum light beams. In dermatology, carbon dioxide laser, otherwise known as a CO2 laser, is invisible, far infrared light with a length of 10,600 nanometers generated from carbon dioxide. Water molecules selectively and highly absorb light of such a wavelength. Now, the epidermis, the topmost layer of the skin, is sensitive to CO2 laser beams. And when CO2 laser hits the skin, the energy heats up and vaporizes epidermal water molecules and with them, the epidermal cells. Now, in the hands of a skilled laser dermatologist like Dr. Kilmer, CO2 lasers can strip off the epidermis with minimal damage to underlying tissues. The CO2 laser is an ablative laser because it removes the skin's superficial layers. Today, she joins me to chat lasers, skin rejuvenation, and the benefits of carbon dioxide therapy for the skin. Welcoming now to the show is Dr. Suzanne Kilmer. Welcome to the show, superstar. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about what I really love. Uh, this is right up your alley. You are the expert, my dear. So let's talk your background and contribution. So Dr. Kilmer, could you share with us your journey in dermatology and what inspired you to specialize in laser and skin rejuvenation? Absolutely. Um, I'm actually very lucky. I got into it way in the beginning of lasers. And there had been some laser work in the early 60s, but there was an accident in the lab. And then it sort of lasers started popping up again in the 80s. And back then it was to treat birthmarks, so nothing cosmetic. And then we were looking at treating tattoos, again, not really cosmetic. And I had trained under somebody at UC Davis, Dr. Ronald Wieland, who knew a lot about it, but he said, if you wanna learn more, you wanna be at the forefront, you gotta go train with Rox Anderson. And Rox Anderson runs Wellman Labs of Photomedicine at Harvard, and he is the inventor of innumerable things. Everything that you would, you know, laser hair removal, cool sculpting, tattoo removal, birthmarks, um, and then of course, fractional resurfacing and fully ablative resurfacing. And so with him, I was able to start right from the beginning. I became his right hand person. And then when I moved back to Sacramento, we stayed in contact. We're still friends to this day. And through all this learning that I got back when I used, when I was his fellow, I spent every day at lunch and I would write notes on a napkin and like everything that he explained that was actually really complicated, he could make simple. And so I had this benefit of really understanding everything about laser physics from the get go and then slowly adding in more lasers over time. So it's really been very lucky and my privilege to be where I got where I started and to stay in it as much as I have because I really, really love the field. So happy to be here to share any information anybody wants. Yeah, it's all about mentorship. And you seem to have had the right ones, determination and knowledge. And of course, knowledge is power. And you have turned that into uh, your own you know, brand at this point. Now, having been recognized with multiple, and I mean multiple awards and presidential citations, what do you consider your most significant contribution to the field of dermatology? I think, I mean, I love figuring out ideas but I think what I am probably myself most proud of is just the mentoring, the teaching, like the passing on the knowledge, because that's what Rox Anderson did for me. He gave me the start and then let me really understand it. And most of my awards are for, for innovation, of course, but then you have to do something with that and you have to hand it off to others. So I think the teaching and the mentoring is what I'm the most proud of. 
Beautiful. And for those listening, unless you've been living under a rock for the past few years, you're probably aware of the number of fields that laser therapy is being used in, including skincare. By precisely removing the dead skin and redundant skin layer by layer, laser skin resurfacing helps make your skin appear younger and healthier. And that's the bottom line. The best thing about this procedure is that it can either be performed on its own or with other cosmetic surgeries, what we call combo therapy. And that's extremely important to note as well. Now that said, for our audience unfamiliar with laser resurfacing, could you explain what it is and how it benefits the skin? Absolutely. So when we say laser resurfacing, we're really talking about anything that we do to the top of the skin. So in fully ablative laser resurfacing, as, as Den was describing earlier, you take that whole top off. And when you do that, the skin repopulates from cells that are deeper in the skin, like down the hair follicle, the adnexal structures, and those cells aren't as damaged. So that is probably the best thing we can do to improve health for the skin because we allow newer, younger, better cells to repopulate. And we actually decrease our incidence for skin cancers. And there's a lot of other great side effects besides just the cosmetic benefit, the health benefits huge. Now, the other thing we can do is because that's a big deal procedure and wound care, everything, you're hiding a solid week. The other thing we can do, and Rox and Dina Ranstein came up with this, is poke thousands of tiny holes into the skin. And we can do that in a variety of different ways by different lasers with different energies, different densities, different spot sizes. So you can pick how big the holes are that you poke into the skin, which can create channels. And those channels will then allow delivery of products into the skin or just allow healing, even if you didn't put anything on top to deliver in. If you just poke the holes, the skin does what it does, which is heal. And the skin's really smart. So by poking those holes, even though you didn't take the whole top off, it'll turn darker areas light, lighter areas, give it some pigment back, like if for some reason you've lost pigment. It will even it out. So if you have scars that are rough and it could be a surgical scar, it could be a burn scar, it could be scar, you know, a traumatic scar, you can then remodel the skin and improve the look of that skin and the function of that skin. It's all about cell manipulation. And of course, yeah. you have a, a big laser beam at your at your disposal. So of course, you, you, you are going to get the effect that you want. Now, in your practice, how do you determine when laser resurfacing is the preferred treatment compared to other available options? And, and curious to know, how do you combine this with CO2 lift? Sure. Well, the first thing is, is a conversation, because no matter what you use after, it, what you're doing at that time determines the expense to the patient, the pain, the downtime, wound care. So a fully ablative procedure is sort of the max of all that max benefit, but it's the most downtime, it's uncomfortable. We give them drugs, we get them through it fine, um, but their wound care is significant as well. And so other things, if we do fractional lasers, it'll be a shorter time. There are lasers that don't even really break the skin. They can go through the skin and treat things, which is another you know whole, different array of things that we can offer. But then once we've created this wound, how can we have it heal the best? So number one, actually, before we even make the wound, we prep the skin. And so we do things like maybe lighten, if you're, if you're a darker skin type, maybe we don't want you to pigment as much. There's like hydroquinone, Retin-A, things that we can do to prep the skin and get you ready. Now I'm gonna do a procedure, and then I've got to take care of that procedure after. So from that point on, depending on if it's a fully ablative, I've got to be very careful, right? Because I've taken off that whole barrier of skin. So I've got to let some of that come back before I can put too much on topically because I don't want to irritate you. Something like the carboxy lift can actually enhance healing. So it can make it an oxygen rich environment. It can promote healing. But I also have to be careful with what is present there because I don't want to irritate that brand new skin that's there. So for a carboxy lift, you could do that right after a regular Fraxel, or you could do that after, you know, some things. But if I have a fully ablative procedure, I might just want to let you heal in a little bit, make sure that you're, you get some barrier function back and so that you don't react to too much. And then we can do the things that can enhance more healing. So there's a lot of things that we can do to enhance healing. And I think anything that we can add to our armamentarium to make that downtime less, the wound care less, pain less, you know, shorten the whole wound care time, that's a benefit. 
without a doubt, I've had many procedures that involve um, dermatology procedures, and the CO2 Lift Pro as a medical monotherapy is extremely effective. I mean, it's just, it's even great for severely dry skin or itchy skin, but for the speedy healing of wounds, uh, it increases blood flow. So I love that. But it's also great as an aesthetic monotherapy, right? So when we when we look at the fine lines and wrinkles and the creepy skin and the dark circles and the textural imbalances, the enlarged pores, um, I like it best that that it's safe. So when applied to you know upper eyelids or on a mucosal membrane. I don't have to worry about it, but I have found that it has, to your point, with the with 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 the proper application, sped up the healing process of wounds, and I thought it was a fantastic product. Now, when deciding between fully ablative and fraction uh, and and fractionated treatments, what factors do you consider? Are there specific skin types or conditions that respond better to one over the other? I mean, in your experience, who would you say is the ideal candidate for fully ablative treatment and who is better suited for uh, fractionated treatment? So fully ablative, like Caucasian, lots of sun damage, lots of precancers, or they have a lot of wrinkling because again, they don't have the melanin in their skin to prevent the, you know, the rays from getting in. So anybody who's got a lot of sun damage and you really want to erase that, but is also willing to go through the downtime. So whenever you go fractionated, you're not only shortening the downtime, but you're also decreasing the injury to that epidermal dermal junction, the DE junction. And for pigmented skin types, so the darker your skin, so types maybe three, but also four, five, and for sure five and six, which are the darker skin types, if you can just poke holes through that DE junction instead of completely disrupt it, you're going to get much faster healing with much less downtime and much less post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So, and then as we have darker skin types, we might decrease our density so that there is less of an injury through that DE junction. It's such an important thing to know and to note and to consider that, th that there has to be a trained professional operating that laser at the other end because not all skin tones and shades react to lasers the same way. And I was reading that the Fitzpatrick scale is utilized by dermatologists to get an idea about how different types of colored skin will respond to UV light. And the scale ranks from one to six, with one being the lightest color and six having the most melanin. And even though it's possible to use any category of laser, or on any skin tone, it's imperative that 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 practitioners remain mindful of doing so because the more pig, pigmented the skin, the higher the risk of that person experiencing more darkness, blotchiness, and brown spots, even if it's the way they want to treat in the first place. So I, I'm very scared of going to somebody that doesn't know what they're doing. You are a leader in your field. It's easy for you to say, but here in the tri-state area, we have lots of people operating laser machines that should not. So thank you for doing your research and being you know, really at the forefront of this. No, my pleasure. And it's so important. You make a huge point because it's much harder to clean up the mess afterwards. So if it's not done well and the person doesn't know how to handle the complications, which is actually super key. If you create the injury, you want to also be able to help them to heal. And if there's a problem, you need to recognize it and jump in and treat it quickly. Yep, without a doubt. Now, the future of laser technology. So looking towards the future, how do you see laser technology evolving in the field of dermatology? Are there any emerging laser treatments or te technologies that you're particularly excited about? Yeah, I mean, we have a couple things. I can't tell you the names because they're in clinical trials right now, but we're looking at better ways to treat red and brown and also to turn on skin healing without as much downtime. We're looking at making lasers that we already have more efficient, more um, specific, if you will, so that you can narrow down their focus, but, but by that increasing their efficacy. Everything right now is, um, there's some new things too, like I, we haven't really talked about like off face. There's a lot of body contouring, you know, and, and uh, muscle stimulation and skin tightening, if you will, FDA hates that word because we have to be careful about how we use it, but there's a lot of things that we're doing and we are able to do it now with very little to no downtime. So we can put all these things together in conjunction. So on your face, 
I might treat through your skin for some of the red and brown. And then I might use a laser that's coming up that can smooth the top off, but not take the whole top off, and but turn on remodeling. And then I might use something that also puts heat deeper into the skin that can do tightening. And you can walk away with a great result. And this is our hope for the future, is that we will have a myriad of things that we can do that give you similar results to what you get with fully ablative resurfacing, but minus that downtime, minus that risk that is incurred when you do that. But there's a lot of parts to that that have to be filled in. And like right now, there's a laser that um, Rox is working on that you, you go from both sides and you go in and you focus the light in deep so that you can damage what's in deep with a teeny tiny pinhole through the surface. And that will get turned into something even more powerful than what that is to begin with. And it will be a smart laser because this smart laser is going to have imaging with it. And it's going to be able to see the vessels in the brown and everything that's above and then use these two laser pathways to target in deep with very minimal, minimal surface to uh, injury to the skin. So, so much is happening. It's a super exciting world and I'm so thrilled to be part of it. Well, you are definitely the expert. And with that, we are out of time, but I want to thank you so much for coming on. Uh, you were such a pleasure to chat with, filled with knowledge and just so interesting. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Zen. Guys, if you're indeed interested in getting laser skin resurfacing, you need to ensure that you have taken the good care to find the right doctor. And once you have gotten your treatment, you will need to avoid behavior patterns and habits that might recreate the same problem for you because you definitely don't want to be wasting money on this. Certain steps you can take to care for your skin after laser treatment is to use the CO2 lift products. Definitely helping a lot of people. That was our going deep segment brought to you by CO2lift.com. That was the incredible Dr. Suzanne Kilmer, founding director of Laser and Skin Surgery Medical Group. She's also a clinical professor at the Department of Dermatology, University of California, Davis School of Medicine. You could head directly to their website at skinlasers.com or check them out on the gram at Laser and Skin. CA. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A moment of Zen is brought to you by CO2 Lift. As we age, our skin loses moisture and elasticity, causing wrinkled skin. You can reverse this aging process with CO2 Lift. CO2 Lift utilizes the powerful benefits of carbon dioxide to lift, tighten, and regenerate your skin. This simple, painless at home carboxy therapy treatment is scientifically proven to reverse the aging process. You will see reduction in wrinkles, increase in luminosity, and improve pigmentation, sagging, skin tone, and radiance. For more information or to order CO2 Lift, go to CO2 Lift lift.com.